And also, I love that bit in your book, mate. Well, I've not read all of it because I'm in the process of reading it and reading it. I was reading a bit of it on, at night when you're saying, like, it's wrong to look at this blue light. I'm on a Kindle <laughs> reading it. Going, like, this blue light messes you up because it's daylight. I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> yeah. man. I'm going to have to put this book down in order to we'll obey the book. We'll make an exception. <laughs> I'm going to inject some of the, the, the font of your book into my very vein. But, like... um. I like that bit where you were chatting about Freud and saying that Freud, when he first started taking cocaine, was, I've discovered this wonder drug. I've just been on another 10-mile <laughs> walk and I've come up with a brilliant idea. And then the, yeah, exactly. his letters become, oh, fuck this, I'm depressed. My teeth hurt. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you take someone who's as high-functioning as, as Sigmund Freud and, I mean, obviously an incredible mind, an incredible talent, a brilliant person, just as susceptible to the same charms, you know, the same drugs, the same things that um, billions of, or millions of other people have been susceptible to. I think that's that's all you need to know, right? That that he he, as you say, there's this great story about him discovering um, coca leaves and freaking out about how wonderful they were, going on these insanely long walks, just walking for like twelve hours <laughs> as a as a semi semi elderly, not especially healthy man. And he's like, this is incredible. I feel like the greatest I've ever felt in the whole my whole life. This is phenomenal. Um, and so, yeah, you, you put that in front of people. You dangle that in front of people. Of course, we're going to want that. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't put people in that position and expect them to always make exactly the, the right rational, logical decision. Um, and, and really, this, is, this, um, this question, you, were, you were, drew the religious analogy to you know, um, sacrificing and the idea that it's, it's sort of inherent in being human, that we have to sacrifice things for, for other benefits. I mean, that's, that's sort of true about everything we do as human beings. You know, any, any long-term benefit, and there are so many things we have to sacrifice for for the long-term, like saving money for the future, eating well today so we're not unhealthy down the line, exercising so that we'll be healthier down the line, cultivating friendships that might take time today so that later on we'll have like a lot of people around us who, who support us. Uh, you know, all of this is just, this is the bread and butter of what it means to be human. And so I think... When it comes to screens, yeah, to some extent, this is about individual liberty and the decisions we make as individuals. But the fact that there are so many of us, everyone I talk to is like, I, I wish this were different. I feel like I, I just need more time away from my screen. You know, my, I sit next to my, my partner or my spouse on the, on the couch. We both sit there glued to our screens. I'm with my kids at the table. They only want to be on screens. The fact that we can't just exert that that kind of willpower suggests that it's a much bigger problem that we're going to have to go much deeper and and I, I say up the chain to the companies that are foisting this on us. Yeah, you're right, you know, that it has to come from the producer. Oh, that's where the power is. The power is the centralised unit. The power is not dispersed. Now, can we get into some of your own private business uh, I see you drinking coffee. You're out of control. I am. What else are you addicted to? And then what is your own phone? You've said you use Twitter a bit and stuff, but what is your own phone use like, mate? Um, my phone use is uh, dispiriting, <laughs> <laughs> especially during the pandemic. Um, it's um, it's something I struggle with as well. Um, I I would like to use my phone less than I do. I have certain structures in place that, that I think are fairly helpful. What are they? One thing I do is, I have a little box in my kitchen where um, when, and that's near where the dining table is, that anytime we're there, we're having dinner together. I have two little kids, a three-year-old and a four-year-old, so they're, they're too young to really be exerting their will on, on the family about how much screen time they get. I can still largely decide how much time they get in front of screens. But my wife and I, um, we try to put our phones away from when we're, when we're engaging with the kids or when we're at the dinner table. We try to... It, you know, it's tough with little kids. They don't always want to sit down at the table. But when we can get everyone at the table together, it's, that's a special moment. And there's something valuable about that. And so we try to keep phones away as much as possible. One other thing I try to do is um, on, on weekends in particular, I try to put my phone on airplane mode for as much of the day as possible. And what that does is it means that I can keep using it as a camera. I'm capturing the little moments that are important that I want to remember without being intruded on by by emails and things like that. Like I'm not going to get a text message. I'm not going to get an email. I'm not going to get a WhatsApp. I'm not going to check my social media. And so say it's a Saturday from nine to five, I'm there with effectively a, a, a dumb phone, a phone that allows me to take photos, but doesn't do anything else, doesn't intrude on my well-being. Mm. So those those are some really critical things. Do I you do. breach it, I, mate? Do you go, well, I'm just going to have a quick little look at the WhatsApp? Some, sometimes. Some, absolutely How sometimes. How dare I you? I wish I were better about it. 
I know preaching I preaching this stuff and I'm uh I'm not behaving the right way. I've this I've been very uh I've been struggling with this forever. I mean, it's something that I'm not great with. And my wife, I, I can tell you probably 10 times a week she'll say to me and you wrote that book and she'll see me there standing <laughs> beside of, the side of the room skulking on my phone. It's something I do struggle with. Um I I I often wonder about what to tell people, you know, they want advice about this and I'm not great at it. I it's something that I try to deal with and there are periods of my life where I'm great with it and you know I I'll go for a few weeks where I won't use my phone much at all and I'll feel pretty good about it and then there'll there'll be times when I I really struggle and I want to connect again and and it's 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 difficult um I think the very best thing we can do is not try to re- rely on well-being uh, on uh, willpower as we said and so to have habits that are in place like that little box that we have in our kitchen is really useful um, having rules about the bedtime, about bedtime. So when I go to bed, I, I usually like to do a crossword puzzle on my phone and then I go to bed and then I take the phone and I try to put it outside the room. So it's not it's not in the room with me. Um, and then I, I try not to check my phone in the first hour of waking up. Brilliant. And I almost never succeed, yeah, but tough. I try. <laughs> Because really you use it for the alarm. It's so, like, so multivalent. Uh, There's so many uses. Right, I'm going to hold on. Let me do this because I'm going to do all of these. I'm going to get a box, what, you know, that's for the box, lockdown box that they go in, particularly in front of the kids because we're sort of teaching them this is what we do. Because I've got, um, my children are just a little, a year younger than yours. I've got a three-year-old and a two-year-old. And actually yeah. they are able to successfully dominate. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> they're telling me what, I'll do whatever they tell me. But like, so yeah, I, I feel bad when I use the phone in front of them. But like, you know, there's things on here. There's that app I told you about, like where I'm, le- like I'm learning Spanish off of and stuff like that. But I'm going to I'm going to do all of this. I've been charging the phone downstairs. It's like I'm trying to appeal to you. I've already made you my king of tech addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so desperate to have mentors. Um, like So like, um, yeah, I'll, I'm going to do that box thing. I'm going to do that airplay all day mode. In fact, everyone listening to this, this should be that. This is what we're going to do. We're going to put our phones in boxes. We're going to do our airplay mode. Uh, Demaya, who works here, just tried to put her phone on a, a, a ladder, like a, a two <laughs> foot away from her, and looked all like she did this, mate. She put down ladder and she went, <laughs> like, stroked it, stroked it out of, like, to apologize to it for being disloyal to the phone. Um, so like, um, what I'm going to do yeah, is I'm going to follow all of those instructions, but I'm going to recognize that yes, it like in the short term, it does seem wise to have subscription model media and services that you pay for so that you are the consumer, even though that ultimately we would like to be awakened civilians or citizens or something. Um, but at least we're not users anymore. And like that, our attention isn't continually being commodified that should be sort of the campaign the end to make the producer of the drug culpable not the con- the consumer or user of the drug i think that's that's uh that's a great initial aim i think that's a good place to begin is uh seeing us not as as users but as as even if you don't want to go down the consumer route as customers you know people right. who choose to give our custom to the product we we come with all the knowledge we need and um, based on the benefits we get, we decide it's worth paying the costs. And usually they're, they're financial costs, like a small amount of money for a subscription. Small price to pay. Did you Do you know that Joe Rogan's reading your book? Yeah, I'm actually going on his show. Yeah, yeah that'll be, yeah. I mean, yeah, that'll, that'll sell you some books, man. Like, I, that, there is, <laughs> like we were going to get you on anyway, because I think maybe we've been speaking to your publisher or whatever, but I was listening to it. He did a really good episode. I think it was his first episode on Spotify with Duncan Trussell, who's, um, yes. I've been on this show and I've been on his show and I've been on Rogan a, a couple of times but they were talking about um, you know he was saying that you know it was having an impact on him that would be a yeah. I mean it's a great show and, and in terms of impact man that's that's the way to go yeah yeah that's uh, in a couple of months oh fantastic all right well I'm glad we had this fantastic opportunity to speak to you Adam you, you communicate these ideas very very beautifully I'm really really enjoying your book I wish I could get it put on parchment or perhaps on a cave wall so I didn't have to <laughs> disobey its edicts while reading it <laughs> yeah that, I realize there's uh, there's something inconsistent about it right I'm foisting this product onto people and most of them are reading it on screens We're, you know I think reading a book on a screen is so different from scrolling mindlessly through Facebook or whatever it's I say it's fine. I read almost all my books on a on a Kindle anyway. Yeah, right. We're good. We've got a pass yeah. for that. You're good. You're good. You, you, you get to, I'm going to bless that. Thank you. And would you mind if I took heroin just a couple of times a week just to, just yeah. to take the edge off? Yeah, I'm not going to bless that one. But I'll, I'll <laughs> Damn! Just, uh... I was so close <laughs> with the blessings. 